question for you. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad you're joining me today. Um, and, you know, like, like yourselves and some of you, doTERRA essential oils have really improved my life. And so I'm really excited to have you um, have this opportunity to share with you the benefits of papaya oil. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys right now. And if you want to mute, unmute yourself to ask a question, feel free to hop in at any time. Um, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Ginny, wellness advocate with doTERRA. I spend a lot of time teaching people about using oils and having natural health, you know, reaching their health goals, because we all have things in our lives that we want to change or make better, right? Um, one of the things that I started with um, in my journey was I just didn't want to be tired all the time. I wanted to have energy. So I found that the oils and especially the supplements that doTERRA has were phenomenal for changing my own life. So I'm going to talk to you today about our Copaiba essential oil. So really the goal is to discuss the differences between the CBD oil and doTERRA's Copaiba essential oil. So I'm going to start with CBD oil. Whoop. What is CBD? Okay, so the, t the term CBD, if we, for you guys that don't know, is actually short for cannabinoid, right? A cannab cannab yeah, cannabinoid. Dial. I can't pronounce it, but that's the word. It's a naturally occurring chemical compound from the cannabis plant. That I can pronounce. Like cannabis, got that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unlike its cousin, tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, we all know what THC is, right? CBD is not psychoactive, and it's often taken to impart a feeling of relaxation and calm, right? So um, cannabinoids are produced naturally in our bodies and they're called endocannabinoids. The cannabinoids that come from plants, such as CBD, are called phytocannabinoids. They're both cannabinoids, right? Anything that triggers your endocannabinoid system, that's our ECS, is considered a cannabinoid. So let's talk about the ECS, that's your endocannabinoid system, just the system in your body. So before discussing the benefits of cannabinoids, it's really essential that you understand how they work in the body. So for this, we turn to the endocannabinoid cannabinoid system, the ECS, and that ECS plays a vital role in regulating a lot of the functions within our bodies, including the inflammatory system, immune function, our sleep, our appetite, digestion, pain receptors, hormones, reproductive function, and memory. That's a lot of systems, right? And the endocannabinoids made by the body activate, activate your cannabinoid receptors, the CB1 and the CB2 receptors. Now your CB1 receptor is primarily associated with pleasure and reward pathways, while your CB2 receptors are found mainly in the immune system and are not as wide, widely distributed throughout the body. Oops. So um, CBD directly interacts with CB1 and CB2 receptors. However, there's some evidence that suggests that this interaction is so weak that it's inconsequential. And so you can read more about this if you wanna really delve into this. I have a great link for you. Um, it's www.ncbi, that's um, Navy Charlie Bertha Igloo dot NLM, Nancy Larry Mary dot Nancy Igloo Henry dot gov slash PubMed slash 1782829 um, so that's one of the pub. If you do a lot of PubMed research, you'll come across a lot of these things. There's a lot of great things on PubMed. And Gov is, of course, abbreviated G-O-V, not G-U-V, it's G-O-V. So despite that weak interaction, CBD does still affect your endocannabinoid system indirectly by a different mechanism. So in-depth discussions of these mechanisms are really, you know, beyond the scope of today, but if you want to do more research, it's available. But it's really important to understand the distinction of directly impacting the ECS receptors versus indirectly creating a similar effect. There's many ways we can affect our body, indirectly, directly, right? So we want to discuss how these are done. So let's talk about the direct receptor stimulation. Now receptor activity is one of the most significant distinctions between CBD oil and Copaiba essential oil. So essential oils have complete plant chemistry. That's what we like about them, right? They're, they're the way nature intended. And because of this, essential oils have direct receptor activity. And that means that the interaction between copaiba essential oils and cannabinoid receptors is not dependent on any other mechanism. And that direct 
direct action triggers a really rapid and immediate response, which is what we're looking for when we use it, right? Um, so let's talk about Kapiva a little bit. So what is Kapiva? So now that we've kind of understood the physiology of it, let's talk about Kapiva oil. Now it comes from a fragrant tropical tree that's native to South America. And like all doTERRA essential oils, Kapiva oil goes through that stringent you know, processing process to produce a certified pure therapeutic grade product. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The Kapiva is a large towering tree and it grows in tropical range forests of South America. So for hundreds of years, traditional healers in like Northern Brazil have used copaiba trees for their health benefits. And doTERRA's copaiba essential oil is steam distilled from the resin of those trees. So we know we talk about different things, where they, do they come from leaves, do they come from branches, whatever. This comes from the resin, much like frankincense, right? So is um, CBD safe and effective? So before we get into the benefits, let's talk about some of the other aspects of CBD oil users will need to consider. And it's certainly easy to get you know, swept up in the current trend of taking CBD oil. It's touted for its benefits in everything from dog treats to gummies, right? And more research is really needed. In fact, the re recent research on CBD oil is lagging is really due to legal and research limitations. Additionally, the FDA acknowledges that some companies are marketing products containing can cannabis and cannabis-derived compounds in ways that violate the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, and that may put the health and safety of consumers at risk. And the, their conclusion was that health benefit claims may be premature and need more scientific backing. But that's where we're starting, right? It's great that it's legal and now we're starting somewhere because that way we'll get the studies, right? That's what we want. We want great studies. And is it legal? So the legality of CBD is a little bit complex. So the 2018 Act, remember this is only two years ago. So in our lifetimes, we've seen all this happen, right? We all remember when, when cannabis was illegal, right? We've all been there. So now we know the 2018 Act did not remove the FDA's authority to regulate products that contain cannabis or cannabis-derived compounds under the FD&C Act and the Public Health Service Act. And that means that any product containing cannabis or cannabis compounds, such as CBD, is still subject to the same laws as any other drug or dietary supplement. And that includes CBD oil. Now, any product containing CBD, regardless of its THC content, cannot currently be sold as a doTERRA, I'm sorry, as a dietary supplement right now. Uh, this is because the FDA has approved neither the THC nor CBD under the FDNC Act. So as confusing as the legality is, it kind of boils down to if CBD comes from a hemp plant with less than 0.3% THC, you can buy it under federal law. But some states still have legal restrictions on the possession of CBD. And I think, I'm not sure how it is in Canada. I don't know if maybe you can enlighten me a little bit. What is the current um, legalities of um, CBD and or pot in Canada in the different provinces? Actually, I'm not too familiar with that. So I can't really speak to it. You don't know the answer? It. Yeah, so no. we'll look into that a little bit. My understanding from what I've been told, and you know, again, this is hearsay, and it's constantly changing, so I don't know, but it has been legal in certain provinces and it's run province by province as far as I know. So if anybody knows anything different, let me know. I'm always willing to learn and be enlightened, right? So benefits of CBD. So most people swear that CBD has helped with a slew of health conditions, including things like back pain, osteoarthritis, even cancer. However, the only approved health use of CBD is the seizure drug, Epidiolix, despite having many other suspected benefits. And as of right now, studies are currently underway to understand its other potential benefits. So that's great, right? We're learning more about it. We're gonna find out what else can it do? You know, how good is this stuff? Now, now let's talk about purity because you now we are with doTERRA, we love pure, right? So when you can practically purchase CBD containing items from just about anywhere these days, and you see probably seen them everywhere. Have you guys seen them all over the place, CBD products? Yep, so there's no guarantee that what, Sorry? There's, there's a store in our area that sells CBD products. I haven't been. Yeah. yeah, and you're seeing it in things. I mean, I'm even seeing it in like hand lotion. I'm seeing it in virtually anything. It's like, I don't know of a product that you can't have CBD in. I think I saw it in toothpaste too. So. I understand if it's in this area, it must be pretty pretty popular because this area is like 30 years behind the times. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, so it must yeah. be one of those yeah, really popular things. So um, really there's no guarantee that what you're getting is on the label. So when it comes to verifying product purity, third-party testing is best. We all know that, right? 
However, it's not required. And so many products are, sk are skipping paying those fees to ensure that the products are pure. And that's a real concern. And in fact, in 2017, Journal of American Medical Association study tested 84 CBD products and found that 26% contained lower doses than stated on the bottle. So there's also a lot of confusion regarding dosing. You know, how much to take, how often, and doesn't follow any specific guidelines because it's really only been approved for treating seizures. So it's all coming down to guesswork and trial and error and to find the right amount that might offer benefits. And this can be a real problem if you're using it for specific things. Um, you get a bottle one time and then you get a bottle another time and it's acting totally different in your system, right? We wanna have that consistency. That's what we love about essential oils. We love the consistency. If we take one drop, one drop's usually gonna do this, right? If we take two drops, it usually does that. And it's pretty consistent. So now that we have a better understanding kind of of CBD oil, and remember CBD oil is not an essential oil. <clears throat> it is an oil, not an essential oil. So we need to understand the difference between what is essential oil and what is not. Okay, so papaya oil, like what doTERRA has, let's talk about that. Um, so we've already covered where it comes from, right? And that it works directly on those cannabinoid receptors. So before I explain the um, benefits, let's take a moment to just understand essential oils. So what are essential oils? For some of you guys, you guys know this, right? Essential oils, those are plant, plant um, compounds because plants contain highly concentrated compounds and we call them essential oils. The essential oils are what gives plants its aroma. That's why our essential oil smells so strong, right? This geranium, anybody ever smelled that geranium? Whoa, that is really strong, right? Uh, so um, that is what you give the plants its aroma. It protects it from the harsh environmental conditions and it protects it from insects. And it even plays a part in plant pollination. So essential oil use is not a fad, but rather it's been a long time tradition started many, many centuries ago in civilizations all over the world. And with our advancing technology, improved quality, potency, and safety, essential oils have now become more accessible and easy to use in everyday life. And additionally, we have increasing scientific evidence and research to show the effectiveness and safe nature of essential oils. So how are they made? So with um, essential oils, we have to remember that essential oils are not all created equally. So the exact process for producing an essential oil will vary depending on what type of plant the oil comes from. And however, the basic idea is really that plants go through a specific distillation process. Essential oil residues within different parts of the plant, often in microscopic amounts. Now during the distillation process, machinery will separate the essential oil from the original plant part. So it's a machine driven process, right? For example, like when citrus oils are produced, machinery is used to separate the essential oil from the fruit's rind. Now we'll talk about the purity. So the purity of an oil can change depending on its geographical location. So where it grows, where it lives, where it hangs out, right? Um, its distillation methods. So whether you distill it with a chemical or you distill it by purely mechanical uh, means or steam distilled, which is a very popular way, right? Um, weather is going to have an effect on the oil and other factors. So no matter how well a plant is selected, cared for, and even harvested, the quality of essential oils can either be preserved or destroyed during that distillation process. So because of the attention to detail and precision necessary in distillation, it becomes less of a process and more of an art form. So distillers have to be really precise. They have to pay careful attention to their harvesting methods, the temperatures, the time of distillation, the amount of pressure that's used, and more. So when producing, when purchasing essential oils, just like CBD oils, purity should be a very significant concern. An essential oil that isn't pure means you run the risk of putting germs, heavy metals, or adulterants onto or into your body, which can provoke irritation, adverse effects, or even sickness. And I've seen this myself because I, um, I love to read people's test results. I, I don't know, it's a science, science person in me, right? Um, but I read these things and I read a report once and one of the ingredients in their essential oil was toluene. And they said, well, toluene is a natural, is a natural product, right? And I was like, well, no, not really. It's a, it's what we call like a petrochemical type product, right? And they said, well, it's naturally present in their plants. And I said, yeah, if you grow your plants next to a gas station, it probably is because toluene is gonna to be excreted from that gas station. There's also some evidence that some plants when they're highly stressed will actually produce toluene. 
So it's very interesting, kind of like, you know, when we're highly stressed, we produce cortisol, right? And then we gain weight. So <laughs> they, have their, they have their own issues. Plants, plants are not perfect. They have their own issues, right? So we have certified, certified pure therapeutic grade oils. So doTERRA takes, oil, takes purity very, very seriously in their products. In fact, doTERRA created its own testing process, calling it CPTG or Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. And the CPTG process certifies that there are no added fillers, synthetic ingredients, or harmful contaminants in their essential oils that redu would reduce their efficacy. And doTERRA even goes a step further, putting all their products and packaging through a battery of tests to ensure a long and effective shelf life. And this protocol ensures the potency, purity, and consistency batch to batch. So now let's get back to copaiba oil. So what is copaiba oil used for? Well, copaiba oil supports the health of the cardiovascular, the nervous, digestive, immune, and respiratory systems. And the main constituent of copaiba oil is that beta carophylline, which you've probably heard it's used in, it's in a, other oils, like it's also in black pepper essential oil, for instance. And that in particular ingredient helps soothe anxious feelings. And in addition to its emotional benefits, beta carophylline also promotes a healthy nervous, cardiovascular, and immune system. So the oil contains powerful antioxidants that, that boost immune health as well. And you know, this is a great way to get your antioxidants because a lot of times we have to get those through food. And sometimes food means excess calories. And we know we need to eat our vegetables and, and stuff like that. But if we can get antioxidants also in our essential oils, that's gonna help our immune health tremendously because these aren't gonna be, these, there's no calories in our oils. I don't know if you realize that. There's zero calories in here, right? So we can use these, we can use them to flavor our food, we can use them without food, we can use them in our environment, we can put them on and consume them, right? And we will get the benefits of those antioxidants. And like we said, it's sourced in Brazil from four species of copaiba. So by harnessing the benefits of the most potent copaiba species, a maximum potency essential oil is obtained. So this is really, again, it's this art form, right? Figuring out how much to put of each thing. And they do it by, by basing it on the actual natural chemical compounds that are present and what those compounds do to the human body. So we're looking for a balance of the right things for us as humans, right? Um, and, and interestingly enough, you know, copaiba oil is one I use a lot with my pets. Like my, my dog uses copaiba oil every day because he has hip issues. Um, and it's used with horses pretty often as well. So some great benefits there. Um, it's got a, like a pleasant, spicy, and kind of woody aroma. And copaiba oil can also help calm emotions, soothe anxious feelings. Again, wonderful oil to turn to at the end of a stressful day. So when you get home, if you uh, just a couple drops, and you put it in some water or even directly. Copaiba is one of the rare oils that I have no problem putting directly under my tongue doesn't taste great. I will take a drink afterwards, you know, I'll have something afterwards. Um, but I can put it directly under my tongue and that way it gets into my body right away. So I can unwind that way instead of having a glass of wine, right? Or I assume I can put it in a glass of wine. Haven't tried it, but let me know if anybody does. <laughs> you can put it in a glass of wine and give you some of that extra boost of relaxation, right? So how do we use copaiba oil? So we can um, diffuse copaiba oil or inhale it. So diffusing is when you put it in or on something. So like Lily here at our, our meeting here today, um, sells diffuser jewelry on her website. And those are great because you put essential oil on diffuser jewelry. Diffuser jewelry uses a lot of times these lava stones. And what it does is the essential oils get inside all the little crevices that are in there and then slowly diffuse it out into your environment. So it's a really great way to use essential oils aromatically. We can put them in our diffusers with water. You can put them on a clothespin and stick them on your car vents in your car. Um, and you can just smell it right out of the bottle. So if you like to open a bottle, wait, I'm not doing journeying again. That was way too strong. Um, so open your bottle and inhale and you will get the benefits. Your limbic system has been activated, right? Um, you can also use copaiba oil topically. So to, um, copaiba oil is really known for its beautifying effect on the skin. It's widely used in cosmetics um, to promote a clear and smooth complexion. It can be combined with cedar wood. It can be diluted with fractionated coconut oil or other um, carrier oils and applied topically. Um, you can add a drop of copaiba oil to facial moisturizer to help keep your skin clear and reduce the appearance of blemishes. Um, I read some separate research that did say that copaiba oil is really good for helping tighten skin. So I've added it to a lot of my skin products. 
And then internally, for increased cellular support, because again, those cells have to be operating optimally for us to be great individuals. We want those cells to be operating perfectly. So for increased cellular support, you take internally and you can take it alone or they recommend it with frankincense. The combo of papaya and frankincense is a very powerful combination. For digestive support at meal times, you can take it with peppermint. And you can add one or two drops of papaya oil to water, juice, tea, to support the health of the cardiovascular, immune, digestive, nervous, and respiratory systems. So did you know that copaiba oil may provide antioxidant support when ingested? So drop one or two drops of copaiba under the tongue as part of kind of your daily health regimen. And for even more uses, you can check out um, at doTERRA. They have doTERRA.com. It's a, what is it? Uh, it's their spotlight. So if you do a search for doTERRA copaiba blog, you'll find their spotlight on, on the copaiba oil, which is also some really great information about how we can use the different oils. I have a question. So, um, uh -huh. how, many, how many drops of the copaiba oil would you recommend per day for an adult? You can do, copaiba is a pretty mild oil, so you can't really overdo it. I wouldn't do more than two drops every two hours, except for in extreme cases. I have taken mm -hmm. eight drops at one sitting, but it's not like I do that every two hours throughout the day. I just needed it for a specific purpose. So if you're using it. I did that before I had my root canal done. Yes, I, so I did it pain. before you went to the dentist. Good idea. Mm -hmm. it, it's phenomenal. And it Eight helps drops, with so exactly. many things. Yes. So you can do, you know, and I'm a small individual. I'm 100 pounds. So, you know, for bigger individuals, obviously you can do more. So Copaiba is one you can do fairly regularly. Um, I would not do like eight or 10 drops at a time, you know, every day throughout the day, that would be too much. Because remember, your liver does have to detoxify your body from all essential oils that you use. So you don't want to overdo any specific oil. It can imbalance your body. So if you're using it for a specific purpose, then of course you want to use more drops. Um, if you're using it for just your daily, uh, in a daily regimen, like I use Copaiba daily, and I just, like Dr. Hill recommends, I just take a couple drops in the morning to try to take the edge off of my day. So a lot of people, and with my dog, I give him two drops in the morning to take the edge off of his hip issues. So um, I know this is a ton of information and I talk pretty quickly, so <laughs> I apologize for that. But really the key factors to remember when comparing CBD oil versus copaiba essential oil, CBD oil is relatively new compared to essential oil use, which dates back centuries. And while the uses of CBD oil sound promising, we really need a lot more research to make official benefit claims. Um, copaiba essential oil works directly on the cannabinoid receptors, and CBD uses other mechanisms to work on those receptors. Um, doTERRA copaiba essential oil goes through a really stringent process to ensure the highest quality and purity, and right now there really isn't any standard for purity or potency for CBD or even generic essential oil brands at this point. So, you know, that's, that's why I love copaiba. I mean, it's just absolutely a wonderful oil. Um, there is a great video. Um, let me see if I can show it to you. Let me see if it'll let me click over the link. Yep, let me show you this video. And I'm not sure it's, how it's going to show up on our screen here, but let me stop sharing and I'll share my other screen so you can see this really quick video while it uploads quickly here. Copaiba trees have been used in traditional health practices of northern Brazil. Copaiba essential oil supports the health of the cardiovascular, nervous, digestive, immune, and respiratory systems. doTERRA copaiba essential oil is sourced in Brazil from large towering trees that grow in tropical rainforests in South America. With a pleasant, spicy, and woody aroma, copaiba can help soothe anxious feelings and is a wonderful oil to turn to at the end of a stressful day. It also has a plethora of benefits when taken internally. Copaiba's main chemical component is beta caryophyllene, a chemical similar to cannabinoids found in cannabis. However, beta caryophyllene does not contain psychoactive qualities like cannabinoids. Beta caryophyllene may protect nerve cells and may also support the cardiovascular and immune systems. When the beta caryophyllene molecules in copaiba attach to receptor sites within the immune system, it sets off a cascade of positive effects, like a key unlocking a door to possibilities. 
You can take one to two drops of copaiba in a capsule morning and night, or take drops under the tongue. For increased cellular support, combine copaiba with frankincense. Due to its beautifying effect on the skin, copaiba may be combined with cedarwood or blue tansy and applied topically. So one of the things I noticed there that you probably also noticed was they were talking a lot, um, or they mentioned again, about the nerves. So that's really good that we have on um, something that we can use to help the nervous system, because that is one of the your primary systems of the body. So any questions about the copaiba? Because I know I, I'm using it, and Barbara, you use it too, right? And Lily, have you had a chance to use copaiba at all? Yes, actually. Right now, I am... Um trying to use it with the frankincense in a like as a moisturizer uh -huh. so I use frankincense um copaiba and um fractionated coconut oil okay and because you mentioned yesterday that it absorbs better yes. <laughs> the absorption is better so I put that in yeah. and I blend them together and I put it on uh, at night at night time and then I put some vitamin e just to okay. hopefully it covers it up <laughs> <laughs> because you mentioned if it's covered, <laughs> it'll stay longer. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm just yeah, trying yeah. it. We'll just see what happens. Right? I've actually thought about using some of the things on my face and getting plastic and just slapping the elastic on my face to make it really absorb in. You know, I'm turning, getting old. I'm getting that turkey neck. I'm thinking, yeah, I got to use some oils here. But you always forget this area. I don't put anything here. Yes. I just start doing that. Yeah, I put it here too, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to start putting the oils here. And I was thinking, yeah, I should apply the oils and then just slap on a piece of plastic so it all gets in there, right? <laughs> no, you have to breathe. Your skin has to breathe, Jenny. You can't do that. <laughs> it can breathe elsewhere, not there, because I want the oil to all get pushed in there, right? <laughs> so there is a ton of different information about copaiba and CBD. And I think one of the, I think one of the key things I... I think about as I went through this presentation and learned more about um, copaiba versus CBD oil um, that I really liked is I have tried CBD oil and CBD oil, first of all, is super expensive compared to copaiba mm -hmm. oil. Guys. I mean, it is really expensive. Um, and I've heard for a lot of people, it doesn't work and it's probably because it's very inconsistent. So I bought some in Utah. I bought some copaiba oil. I'm sorry, not copaiba, CBD oil. And it was a little bottle and um, it took half a bottle to get rid of the, the situation I was using it for at the time. And that is, it was a $75 bottle of oil. So I'm like, okay, I can't afford to use it. It doesn't matter what it does, I can't afford to use it. So it obviously wasn't very high in whatever the uh, cannabinoids it needed to be because with the copaiba oil, I get relief very easily with just a few drops. And with, you know, in severe cases, you know, with eight drops, but usually just a couple drops. So, um, and like you guys, I'm also using it in my skincare routine because it has such wonderful skin properties. I actually hadn't thought about combining it with blue tansy. I, I'm going to try that because I do have some blue tansy and I think I'm going to give that a shot and see what that's like. See if it turns me blue. <laughs> what, does, what does blue tansy do? Um, blue tansy is also very high in beta carophyllene, um, if I remember correctly. Um, and that's, um, it gives it that bluish tint. Isn't it, is it the beta carophyllene that gives it the blue tint in blue tansy? I thought it was. I think so because I had like a challenge about, I think a year ago to put it on your big toe. Yes. And I think that was something in it that does something in your big toe, but I don't remember what, but I don't really yeah. notice the difference, but. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So, you know, combining those two is nice. And of course, you know, some of these oils that are blue, like blue tansy is actually blue. When you put it on, you will actually be blue for a couple minutes while it absorbs. You can almost see it absorb as it turns from blue into the normal mm -hmm. skin color again, right? But it, that's pretty fun. You mix that. that copaiba in with the yarrow palm in the big bottle? Oh. I did that, yes. I put copaiba oh. in my um, serum. So that's what you're talking about is our serum. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yes. I put copaiba in mine too. <laughs> and yes, that's what does that do? Yeah. You know how your legs get dry, like especially in the summer because you shave your legs every day like I do. Oh man, that stuff is great. Yep. It yep. Really... I always put it on at night before bed. Mm -hmm. And then the other, the other yarrow palm um, I use on my face. I use it twice mm -hmm. a day. And I think it works really well. But uh, yeah, adding copaiba to this stuff just boosts a lot of it. And there is some information out there that copaiba works with almost all the oils in a kind of a boosting or um, 
helping kind of effect. So Copaiba has many, many uses for us. So hopefully this has been really useful for Copaiba. If you want to learn more, um, you know, reach out to me if you want more res resources. Also, you can do some searches. There's some wonderful video that Dr. Hill does. So if you do a search for doTERRA, Dr. Hill, Copaiba, then you'll see a great comparison that he also did between CBD oil and Copaiba and talking more about the benefits of Copaiba and um, how it works on our system in very, you know, he does one that's in amazing detail, that's extremely scientific. So if you're, <laughs> you can handle all the science, you can jump into that, or you can just trust me in that it's a really good oil, try using it. So many people are buying that now. Um, a lot of people are, are saying that's really helping them a lot with their anxious feelings that they're experiencing right now, as well as, you know, skin issues um, and soothing, aching, stuff like that. So really good product. This so, poor dog, we, they've been shooting off fireworks. She is so petrified. Uh, I have to hold her you constantly. Should be, now you should put Serenity and Copaiba on her paw. And Copaiba. And Copaiba. The Copaiba, remember, for anxious feelings. So if Serenity isn't doing it by itself because they got you know, things going on, then yeah, add the Copaiba to that. Diluted or no? One drop. <laughs> Diluted. No, it's just putting it on her fur on her front paw so she can smell it. It's it's the aromatic benefits that are gonna be soothing for her. So you don't need to dig She'll be okay to lick it then. She licks. Yeah, she licks like it, it's fine. Yeah, she'll be okay to lick it. So thanks so much for coming. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. Now I'll get this posted and then we can chat amongst us.